a single beam system versus a double beam system. Which one is the right choice for your mass timber project? Let's find out today. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks, and in today's video, we're going to explore the double beam system in mass timber construction. Now, this is a type of framing in mass timber using glue laminated timber beams supported on glue laminated timber columns. However, instead of the normal style of construction where there's a singular glue lamb beam at every column line, this particular system actually uses a dual glue lamb beam that straddles that glue lamb column. For this particular discussion, I'm going to bring in Renz Hayes, a structural engineer with H&O Structural Engineering in Boston, and he's going to discuss a particular project that they're working on, and they did choose a double beam system. So let's hear from him and see what he has to say about why they chose that double beam system for their project. All right, well, I'm happy to have joined me on today's video, Renz Hayes of H&O Structural Engineering, an engineering firm in Boston. They are currently working on a seven-story mass timber building. I know you ultimately chose to use a double beam system where you have two beams straddling your column lines. So could you walk us through what were the decisions that went in to get there, the kind of the pros and cons you weighed of double beam systems versus single beams? Yeah, the double beam approach was honestly like that opened the floodgates that made this project viable and accommodate multifamily and the different um, the facade challenges and the programming, say, at the corridor and the first floor in between the units. So with the double beam system, what we're really achieving is maximum flexibility um, with the column lines. We can create consistent column lines, but we're able to cantilever the beams beyond the column while maintaining simple connections. What I mean by that if we were to use one single beam to cantilever a wood beam past a wood column, you need to do a beam over column condition. In this case, where we have two beams, we're able to split them and then sit them on notches at the top of the column while maintaining the center part of the column. And in mass timber construction, we have to consider the charred section for fire rating performance under fire conditions. This entire building meets two hour fire rating and the center of the column is protected from the char line around the whole column. But when you get to the, the beam connection, the beams actually create the charred section. What that allows us to do structurally is we're actually getting continuity floor to floor with the column. And the beams can cantilever by to create, like it, it, it allows us to say jog the corridor or jog the facade. We don't have to have the column all the way out at the facade. So from an architectural perspective, if we're cantilevering a beam, say four or five feet beyond the column, they're getting maximum flexibility with their exterior facade details from a coat, uh, energy perspective, and even like a curtain wall detail, you really have that beautiful exposed CLT floor coming right out to the edge of a, like say a full height window. You don't have a column and a beam in the way. Uh, the other thing this did at the bottom level, um, this is in an urban development. So we often have uh, lot line challenges and adjacent properties. Uh, we're able to pull all the columns in from the, uh, uh, the perimeter lot line, which gets all the columns landing on the center of the foundation, avoiding offset foundations. It also saves us from potentially undermining and having to shore up against the adjacent property. So it really eliminated those challenges, which also saves costs and accelerates schedule. I think that's, that's great. And I think something else maybe that continuous column does is probably eliminates some shrinkage concerns that you might've had if your beam was passing over the top of the column, potential crushing of the beam, also yeah. potential cumulative shrinkage. And by, by flying that column past the beam, you've really got continuous longitudinal wood fiber throughout the height of the structure. You got it. We're not taking a column and landing it perpendicular to the grain, right? We're, we're going column to column connection there. So to your point, it's gonna save on all of that shrinkage over the height of the building. Uh, the other unique thing with the double beam is in mass timber, particularly in multifamily residential, you wanna line up your demising walls with the beams and the columns. Um, and then now what this does, it creates a, a gap between the two beams. So we have a plenum to run MEP up in between the two beams. So what is that actual gap dimension and how far do the beams notch into the column where they bear? Yeah, it's a great question. So between the beams, we designed them with a six inch gap in between. And I think that really allowed for that mechanical coordination we're talking about to happen. Um, as far as the notch design, so again, we have to consider the charred section. So we have a nine inch wide glue lamb beam, and that's sitting on a five inch uh, notch section of the seat. So under 
the charred section, when we have to analyze that, we still need to make sure after the charred section of the column that we still have a full inch and a half of bearing. And then that um, eccentricity is resolved by the connection through the fasteners, nails, or screws that hold that beam into the center of the column. Got it. Okay. And one last thing that comes to mind too on this double beam system is obviously it's each of those beams is smaller than if that had been one singular beam. Uh, right. And we've heard some potential savings there because if you go to one single beam, depending on what the spans and loads are, that could be a very deep beam affecting head heights and or it could be a beam that's not a standard product for a glue lane manufacturer. So by going to smaller products, you're generally going to be more, you know, cost, or excuse me, uh, standard products and, and prices might reflect that accordingly. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, so like the glue lamp beam might have been 18 inches wide in our case, which is kind of an odd section from a manufacturing perspective. But in this case, we have nine inch wide members. And I think there's 16. Yeah. Inch. And then so from a multifamily perspective, we were able to gain seven floors of mass timber construction while saying under 70 foot high. But we were still with the CLT, we were providing eight foot eight and eight foot nine uh, clear like ceiling heights to the underside of CLT, mm -hmm. which is a nice nice living space. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that discussion on double beam systems and their potential benefits, potential attributes. And hopefully that helps you evaluate if it might be a good fit for your project, or perhaps a single beam system is more efficient for your project. Feel free to reach out to us and let us know how we can help on these types of discussions for your mass timber projects. That's all for today's video. I thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.